All right, parents, welcome. We're um, going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our McClay Middle School curriculum overview. We are going to cover our core um, subject areas. We have our department chairs and department representatives here with us from the middle school. We have our language arts representative, which is um, Marie Fraser and our math chairperson who is Christy Herzog. We have our science department chairperson Rachel Paul and our world language um, department chairperson Emma Perry and social studies department chair department representative David Combs. We also have on the call Elizabeth Sheward who is our middle school academic dean. I'm Barbara Rubio Gomez the middle school director we're excited to have you here on this call and teach you all the ins and outs about our curriculum here in the middle school. So one of the things that I want to start off with is a couple of years ago, this is our second year where we moved, uh, we changed our schedule from your traditional 45 minute per class um, schedule. Instead, we changed it to a block schedule and what that means is is we have A days and B days and if you we have our schedule posted on the website so you can have a visual to refer to but we have in the block schedule our students take four courses per day and it's a total of eight courses so those four courses a day change um, from from day to day so we have each of the classes are 80 minute periods and the reason why we changed that is because we found how in our former schedule we just didn't have enough time to be able to engage in project based uh, learning. It also allows us to dig deeper and be more rigorous with our provide a more rigorous curriculum by having these 80 minute blocks. So as I mentioned our core courses our students have a total of eight classes. So six of them are actually courses that our students are required to take. So we have our language arts, we have math, we have science, we have so social studies, we have our world languages, and our students are also required to take PE classes. So then that provides the students with two opportunities for electives. We want to make sure that uh, again, we want to make sure that our students are engaged. So that's why we went ahead and and moved into a block schedule and every year the team um, we get together and base and talk about our curriculum so that it's constantly evolving to make sure that we're meeting all of our students needs. So I would like for us to I would like to present to you Elizabeth Sheward once again she is our middle school academic dean and she's going to talk to you all about how we make sure that we are learning and understanding each of our students. Good afternoon everyone. Um, so I am going to talk to you a little bit about the process that we use to make sure that our students are appropriately challenged here in the middle school and then after I kind of talk you through that our department chairpersons are going to tell you about all the exciting content that is available in their department. So our process begins by in, by collecting a lot of data about your student and their so that we can deeply understand their strengths and any challenges that we want to help them grow in. So the data that we are collecting comes from classroom grades. It also comes from end of module tests if your students are currently with us in lower school and are taking the Eureka math curriculum and it comes from our a test that we're going to provide our students a rising sixth grade math test and so from all of these data points we're able to get a sense of your students current strengths so that we can make sure that we're finding a a classroom environment that is appropriately challenging for him or her. So from there, we talk to your, your students' teachers, either through teacher recommendations that you provided as part of an application process or by having you know, your teachers write down a 
across the hall almost where our fifth grade teachers are very close and we have the opportunity to really get to know them and collaborate with them so that we know all about your learners. There's also collaboration happening at the middle school level in a couple of key ways. So once we have all of the information, the teacher recommendations, the data, Ms. Rubio Gomez and I are in communication and we have conversations about where a student would be, what placement is best. We also are going to include in those conversations as necessary. We're going to have our Center for Academic Excellence. Um, our director, Janine Couch, will be involved in those conversations as we need to. We're also going to be speaking with Bentley Harris, who is our lower school and um, director, and just continuing to find out more about students. As I've mentioned several times, our goal is to make sure that we are appropriately challenging all of our students. Our curriculum, as Ms. Rubio Gomez mentioned, is rigorous in nature. There's a lot of problem based learning and a lot of opportunities for students to dive deeply into our learning. In that, we are continuously monitoring students and collecting data so that we can ensure that students are are being challenged. And so that might look like, you know, you hear in and when you're thinking about middle school, you start to hear the word tracks and we don't really like to think about tracking our students. We're continuously collecting that data and evolving. So a student is not going to be placed in a course and remain on the track. There's always flexibility so that we can make sure that we're meeting his or her needs and Miss Herzog is going to be able to talk to you more about that progression, especially in math. So what's important to remember in terms of making sure that your student is challenged is that their confidence matters. We want their experience in middle school to be at one that they are able to work through challenges and achieve success, but also really gain confidence in their ability to gain both content knowledge and skills. So that confidence piece, we want to challenge your student without putting them into a situation that is overwhelming for them. That's very important here in the middle school so that we want to make sure that it's a safe learning environment and that comes from being in that appropriate position. One thing that Ms. Rubio Gomez mentioned is that we have elective courses and in the sixth grade, we are going to have something that is called the launch wheel where we are launching into middle school success. Launch is our grade level theme in sixth grade and our students are not only launching into middle school, but they're also launching into developing global perspectives. And as part of the launch wheel, we're going to focus on what are those essential skills that are critical, not only to being successful in sixth grade, but throughout the rest of their academic journey. So students will rotate through a collection of content and courses, including computer science and a sixth grade seminar type course where we're going to learn about different study skills and different ways to take notes and different ways to advocate for yourself. Included in that class will also be a reading workshop where students are going to have another opportunity to enhance their reading skills and also students will as part of their foreign language wheel in sixth grade be able to take a writing course that we call expressions. So they'll be working on craft the craft of writing and how to appropriately gather source material and craft their thoughts in a written manner. So those are just some of the options that go beyond the core content that our sixth graders are going to be offered next year. As I mentioned, we have three grade level themes. So launch, our students are launching into understanding global perspectives, and that happens in social studies as they're studying world geography. It also, so it's a culminating project and we have a great flexibility in our curriculum where our teachers can work together. And so our teachers use this launch theme and study through as they're working in Earth space science and they learn all about the space race and how and the different groups of people that were involved in that. And it's a great chance for them to understand how these individuals came together to achieve a gigantic goal of the United States. Our seventh grade theme is impact where our students are learning about the impact that they can have on their community and the world around them. And finally, in eighth grade, 
we focus on the discover theme where our students are given the opportunity to truly reflect and grow in their knowledge of their own unique skill sets. So these thematic units are, are really embedded deeply into our curriculum, and we feel like it's a great way to allow the students to apply what they're learning in class in a whole new way. And so it's a really unique part of our middle school curriculum that is truly, it gives our students a real sense of community as they're learning together. So I am going to now turn this over to the first of our grade, our department chairpersons, which um, we have Miss Marie Fraser, who's going to talk to us about language arts. Hello, I'm Marie Fraser. Um, I teach eighth grade language arts at McClay. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the Readers Writers Workshop uh, curriculum that we adopted this year. Um, this is the first year that I have taught the Readers Writers Workshop, which is a little bit different from a traditional language arts curriculum where everyone's reading To Kill a Mockingbird at the same time. Um, don't get me the, don't get me wrong, I love To Kill a Mockingbird. I love teaching the classics, but I truly believe that the Readers Writers Workshop model, um, it really allows for increased student engagement. Uh, it naturally differentiates itself to cater to students of all different needs. It allows me to give individualized feedback to all of my students and it allows the kids to have choice in almost everything that they do. Um, we know that choice is extremely important when it comes to students' success and their engagement and interest in what they're doing. So what is Reader's Writer's Workshop? What does workshop mean? Um, workshop is a different way of looking at language arts curriculum. Workshop looks like less teacher talk, less time spent lecturing, blah, 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 in front of the classroom, more time for the kids to um, talk about their own ideas together, more time for the kids to work on um, self-paced assignments, whatever we happen to be um, working on in class for our particular unit. A typical day will look like 20 minutes of silent reading time. The kids will constantly be reading their own books that they choose. Um, 10 minutes of a, a mini lesson given by the teacher where we'll talk about a particular skill or idea um, and then about 20 to 30 minutes of time for the student to be working through that idea or skill on their own or with a group. At the end of the class, we always come back together. We share what we learned. Uh, we'll talk about what's going to be due or homework for the next class. Uh, but this is a new model. It's away from the the teacher centered classroom and towards a student centered environment. So some things that are really important to the readers writers workshop curriculum. One of them, and I think this is probably the most important is reading. Um, it is our duty as language arts teachers in the middle school to get your kids to love reading. We are establishing their reading habits early on in the sixth grade, and we're just going to continue to nourish it all the way through eighth grade getting them ready to um, read long, so for a long period of time, and reading big texts for high school. But not only that, we want them to love it. We want them to be interested in it. We want them to pick out the books that they love and share them with others. Uh, one of the big units that we cover in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is a book club unit where the kids will be reading the same book as a few of the other students in their classroom. They'll meet on a daily basis with those group members and talk about this book together. So yes, that's reading. Uh, we require the students to read 100 minutes um, outside of the classroom every week. For most of the language arts teachers, that is pretty much the primary homework for our kids. Um, I never have an issue getting the kids to read silently for 20 minutes every day of my class. They look forward to it and they love it. Um, writing is also super important. With the reading writing workshop, we sort of switch between reading units and writing units. But these are, if, if you know anything about language arts, you know that they're so tethered together. Reading and writing go hand in hand and there really isn't a day that goes by where we don't read and write. Uh, so I think that reading writing workshop 
just happens at the same time. With that, we are um, dedicated to some grammar practice too. So as ethereal as some, as, as some of these ideas are, uh, we are going to make sure that your kids have grammar skills and, um, and are improving on those as they move into the upper grade levels. Um, yeah, I think that is, that's pretty much it for Readers Writers Workshop. Reading, writing, student centered. Woohoo! Thank you, Ms. Fraser. Um, our next, uh, our department chair, department representative, David Combs. He is uh, representing our social studies department today, and he will be talking to us about our social studies curriculum. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Combs and I teach eighth grade history here at Emma Clay School, and I'm going to talk to you about the social studies department and our curriculum. Um, the social studies department um, sees ourselves uh, as an extension almost of the language arts department and that we are there to um, use the themes and curriculum inherent to social studies to really uh, push on those literacy and writing skills. So while our content might be different um, in that we're reading about things like world geography and civics and American history, uh, we do seek to kind of uh, push on a lot of those same skills. So um, I don't know that our students always love what we read in history because we're pushing more on nonfiction, but they do grow more skilled at it. Um, so um, students start out in sixth grade with Miss Cutter, who is just, I, I believe, the um, ideal sixth grade teacher. She is there for her students and uh, just goes above and beyond to help them not only understand the content, but become stronger students. Uh, she is all about um, pushing on study skills, um, preparing students for uh, test prep and how to you know, take notes in an organized and thoughtful way. Um, and just does a lot to turn someone who was a lower schooler uh, not that long ago into a, a real middle schooler. In seventh grade, the students take civics class, uh, which I taught for a number of years. And now we have Miss Olivardia doing an awesome job uh, with those seventh graders. Civics is an ideal class for seventh graders because um, they're starting to really, you know, question so much about themselves and their uh, society and world and to you know, put them in a class where they can kind of engage in these uh, debates and discussion about society and what it means to be a good citizen um, is just really engaging to them. So um, you know, they might ask you for a search warrant next time you want to look in their room, but you know, they're, they're really learning the constitution and that's really the cornerstone of that course. Um, for American history, uh, which I teach again, um, really trying to uh, the, the capstone maybe of the, of the social studies curriculum is to start really putting um, all of those literacy skills uh, down into words of the students own. So starting to um, compose longer form essays, doing more research based uh, projects and um, really being explicit about the types of critical thinking that we want our students to do. So, you know, asking them to make uh, judgments using historical context and uh, think about the reliability of an author or their text um, to make them better critical thinkers and writers. So uh, that's the goal of the social studies department and um, you know we have a lot of fun with these kids and they uh, seem to really really benefit from the uh, exposure to nonfiction texts because in high school uh, they just have to read so much more and uh, more complex texts, and we hope to prepare them for that. Uh, but I'm going to pass things on now to a class where they also do a whole lot of reading, and that's math class. Ms. Herzog. Thanks, David. Uh, yep. Hi, I am Ms. Herzog, and um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about our whole math curriculum at McClay. Um, we've noticed that, or uh, we've done the research, and about 90% of the math is going to be algebra on SAT, 10% geometry and trigonometry. So, uh, Eureka is really good in that regard because it applies a lot of algebra into our curriculum throughout it. 
um, I shouldn't say algebra, um, but like the, the underlying algebra is in there. Um, it prepares them. So we chose Eureka. It's a, a more rigorous curriculum, as you see on the slideshow. Um, it, I think students get into it and at first they think, oh, wow, this is hard. Uh, but then they start to make these deeper understandings, um, deeper connections. It, it's, it's no more memorizing as we did when we were growing up. It's more um, teaching them the why and understanding the concept rather than just memorizing a formula. Uh, so they, it, you don't forget the formula if you actually understand the formula. So that's one of the beautiful things about the Eureka curriculum is the why behind it. Um, and, and sometimes it's it's hard, you know, for them to, to see it. And then we we continue through it. And at the end, they they have that aha moment, and it's it's a wonderful feeling. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, problem solving in there. They're they're going to take real life and put it into the math curriculum, which is great because um, that's real life, and they need it. So what we've done is in the way of the, the grades and how we've organized the different levels of math, um, when they're in sixth grade, we, we basically have two options for them. They have the grade level sixth grade math curriculum, and then they have uh, what we call an introduction to pre-algebra, uh, which is also a sixth grade level, um, and that would be a more advanced route for the students. Um, in the in the sixth grade level, what we're focusing on in that, and, and many of the grades are going to be this way, where this you'll hear the same type of concepts. Um, they're just going to be built stronger, um, more intense. Uh, so, but in sixth grade, we've got the ratios and the unit rates where we first start out and we focus on those, just um, really manipulating the ratios and unit rates and and understanding them. I think kids, you know, have seen it, but they haven't manipulated them in the way that they will with this curriculum. Um, we, we look at arithmetic operations. Uh, some of the things that they have taught in this curriculum, I, ha I honestly had, had not known until I started teaching it. So it was kind of neat to see these new things that were always there, but I never made the connection. Uh, there's rational numbers that they'll focus on. There's expressions and equations, and then there's geometry and statistics. And that's standard for most curriculums, regardless if it's Eureka or not. But the thing with Eureka is um, it dives very much in depth, and there is that understanding behind it. And But that's mainly sixth grade um, is what I just read. And then we move into seventh grade, and in seventh grade, we have the two platforms. We have the grade level seventh grade math, and then we also have um, pre-algebra, and that's us trying to, again, provide an upper level uh, advanced math for our students in seventh grade. But um, in the, the, the grade level seventh grade is going to focus on ratios. Um, again, we, we heard ratios in sixth grade, but it's going to be more complex ratios proportions, rational numbers, expressions, equations, percentages, statistics, probability, and geometry. Very much, you know, you've, you've heard those concepts in sixth grade, but it's, it's a higher, harder concepts um, and uh, more manipulations of those in seventh grade. And what, what I always find interesting is they, they take, like in the expressions, equations unit, we're in that right now, um, they take it and they pull in geometry. So they're, you know, the kids are learning equations and now they're taking equations and applying them towards uh, diameter and circumference. And, and they're actually integrating those two concepts together. So even though their focus is equations and expressions, they're also bringing in geometry concepts in there. So it's kind of cool because they're pulling in different areas um, different uh, little mini subjects into the main core one that we're currently focused on. So I like that. Um, I don't know how much the kids appreciate it some days, but I like it. Um, and then we move on to eighth grade. Now, eighth grade, uh, we start to drop the, the curriculum, um, Eureka curriculum. We've got a little bit of it in topics in algebra. Um, that's going to be our grade level, so eighth grade level. 
Um, we have some algebra uh, textbook in there. I believe that's the Holt McDougall. And then we also have Eureka. So it's kind of a, a branch, a, a mixture of those two. And then we move into algebra one for the upper level. And that is no more Eureka at all. Uh, the upper school does not use Eureka, so what they ended up doing is keeping the Holt McDougall book because that prepares them for the upper school. And then the geometry is McGraw Hill, and that is for the very upper upper kids who need that extra um, you know, uh, challenge. Um, and then the other thing I forgot to say was that the reason, another reason why we chose the Eureka is that K through five is using Eureka in elementary school. So um, it is a, kind of a, a different way of learning in the way of the real world approach. So our students coming from elementary merge right into our curriculum. It's um, a beautiful you know, build upon. They don't lose any of the the concepts. It's all staggered beautifully. I'm losing my words today, but um, hopefully that gives you an idea of um, our math curriculum and how it's structured. And that is math. And I honestly don't know who's next. <laughs> You'll have to <laughs> Thank you so through. much. You're Thank welcome. you so much, Ms. Herzog. Um, up next, we have our science department chairperson here in the middle school, Ms. Mrs. Rachel Paul. Hi, um, welcome. I am the science department chair. As Ms. Rubio Gomez said, my name is Rachel Paul and I teach seventh grade life science. Now in science, we follow national standards. We follow the NGSS standards, which is the next generation science standards. Very close, well, easily confused with the Florida standards, which are the NGSSS standards, but we chose to follow national standards. We think that these standards, um, they not only address scientific concepts like life science concepts or earth science concepts, but they also allow students to build their scientific processing skills as well as critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. These skills build and we cover these skills in each and every grade in the middle school, which allows them to progress into upper school with a strong foundation for whichever branch of science they lead into in upper school as well as the skills because the skills travel from lower school to middle school to upper school and we just cover them in more depth. Now sixth grade is earth space which is an amazing class and it has an amazing teacher. Miss Barton um, is incredible and she not only incorporates earth concepts and space concepts, but she also coordinates a very fun field trip for the sixth grade students, the Kennedy Space Center field trip, as along with the space concepts that they're learning. Students look forward to that every year. And in seventh grade, we cover life science. That's my group. So not only do we cover um, genetics and the structure of cells, but we move into body systems and ecology and adaptation and evolution. And then eighth grade is our introductory physical science class, which covers chemistry and physics. Um, not only, you know, forces of motion, but we also cover physical and chemical changes and atoms in the periodic table. All three grade levels, as I mentioned before, um, cover aspects of designing an experiment. We want to make sure they know how to answer a scientific question. Uh, they learn how to analyze data. They collaborate in a group. Um, the groups vary from small lab groups to larger groups. And they also learn how to safely complete laboratory investigations and experiments. Again, we want them to develop these lab skills as well as they travel into upper school. This builds a wonderful foundation for them. All three grades work to incorporate as many hands-on investigations and projects and experiments as possible. And really, we work very well together. Um, we try to incorporate cross-level experiments and investigations as well. So that what I mean by that is the sixth grade works with the seventh grade and the eighth grade. This year has put a little bit of a damper on things and it makes it a little bit more challenging to work across grade levels, but we plan on incorporating that as soon as possible in the future. And that is the middle school science curriculum in a nutshell. Thank you, Mrs. Paul. 
Up next, we have our department, our world language department chairperson, Emma Perry, who's going to talk to us about the different world languages that we offer here in the middle school. Sorry, try that again. I thought I'd unmuted. I must have not clicked hard enough. Um, I'm Emma Perry. I'm the uh, for the World Language Department Chair, and I teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade Latin, uh, which is great. I loved the 6th grade language wheel because I get to meet every new incoming 6th grader as they come in, which is very fun. Um, and I always hope they get to take Latin because then I get to watch them sort of grow up in the middle school, which is a cool experience to have. Um, our World Language Department follows the national standards. The standards for world language is a little different than they are for how you might see other standards where they're like, you must learn X, Y, and Z, because it's going to vary by language. So instead, it focuses around the five C's that you can see on the slide. Um, communication, cultures, connections, comparisons, and communities with a few modifications for Latin since we can't like have a Zoom call with an ancient Roman middle schooler and ask them how their day's doing to practice our conversational skills, unfortunately. Black time travel there. Um, our three languages in the middle school are French, Latin, and Spanish. Um, they are very cool. All of the teachers, the French teacher and the Spanish teacher are um, native speakers or bilingual in their language, which is awesome. I'm obviously not a native Latin speaker because again, time travel issue, um, but we do what we can in Latin to, to keep up with that. Um, our sixth grade is an introductory wheel. Like I said, it's probably one of my favorite things that the World Language Department does at McClay and is uh, fairly unique compared to other language programs, even other middle school programs here in Tallahassee. Um, they don't tend to offer a, a choice. They offer a choice, but you just have to sort of go in blind. You have to pick with a foreign language you think you want to take, and if it turns out that wasn't really your thing, well, that's what you picked. Um, here we give students the chance to see if that's their thing, right? They get to have a little taste of each of the languages, sometimes literally a taste. We like to do food projects when we're in non-pandemic years um, in the different sixth grade classes but they get to sample each of the languages, um, learn a little background. And the other thing I love is because all of our languages here are romance languages, they can actually see how French, Latin, and Spanish are related to each other. Um, and I love drawing comparisons in, in Spanish class and in French class. I, this happens too, but you know, you'll be teaching like, oh, that's like the French word, or oh, that's like the Spanish word, or oh, that's like the Latin word that we learned, you know, last ro wheel rotation. Um, and then we do this split, this 1A, 1B split, and this is probably the, my second most favorite thing about how McClay does world languages, um, which is by splitting the level one of our foreign language into across two years, we're able to go at a little bit of a slower pace than trying to cram it all into one year, which means students get more exposure to the language. They get to go more in depth with the grammar with less pressure to learn it quickly. Instead, they can take the time to truly master the language. Uh, if you've ever studied a foreign language, you know the more time you spend using it, the better. And by splitting that first year up, they really get to spend a lot of time getting comfortable with the ins and outs of this new language they're trying to learn. And it gives us more time for cultural projects Projects, um, to help students engage um, and see the, the applications and learn more about um, people from around the world and people back in ancient Rome, as the case may be, um, which brings in our cultures and connections of our five C's in the World Language Program. And we definitely wouldn't get to do that as much if we didn't have this great split. The World Language Department in the middle school spends a lot of time working with the World Language Department in the upper school, so the upper school teachers know exactly where we leave off each year. They know where to pick up. Uh, we know exactly what the upper school teachers expect from our students, and we make sure we get them there. And then all of the world languages, um, uh, French, Latin, and Spanish, go all the way up to the AP level in the high school. And I think I'm actually the last of the department chair, so it's back to either Ms. Sheward or Ms. Rubio Gomez. Thank you so much, Mrs. Perry. Ms. Sheward, you want to talk to the parents about what's next to set up for success here at McClay Middle School? Absolutely. So you may be wondering, when do we sign up for all of these courses? How are we picking electives? Things like that. So that's going to be coming soon. We are currently in the process of 
finalizing our course collection and the options that we're going to have available to all of our students and making sure um, piecing together our schedule and figuring out the best way to offer your students as much, many opportunities as possible. And so typically what will happen is that your student will choose his or her um, preferred electives in April. And so that will go out and this year we are shifting to a new system. Um, and so that our goal is to shift it out to you in our new system. And so students will choose their electives. What we're going to have is that they can choose a selection of electives and rank them. And I will do my absolute best to get them the, the choices that they are most interested in. Um, it takes some, you know, wiggling, but that's one of the great things about this school is that we have a lot of flexibility in our eight blocks and our small size, and we are dedicated to making sure that this is a unique and enriching program for every student. And so that'll be my summer is figuring out where to put them. And so as we're preparing for our first day, that's going to be an important part is what classes am I taking? And so once that course catalog and course options are available, we'll have that on our middle school website for you to look over with your student. And we will, of course, be sending out a lot of communication, probably a lot from both Ms. Rubio Gomez and myself over the summer to make sure that you and your student feel prepared and ready. Part of that is going to include some orientation. And so we will be sending out some information about when those orientation dates will take place for both our sixth graders or any new students that are new to McClay at any grade level. And you will also be hearing, if you are new to our school, you'll be hearing from some middle school ambassadors. So they're gonna be reaching out to your student over the summer and talking to them and talking to them about, you know, things that they can be getting excited about or things that they wanna know. Typically that involves the uniform and food and things like that, or what they wanna know. We'll also have some Zoom calls over the summer, typically with some current students. And those are available to both our rising fifth graders and new students where we'll talk about with some of those middle school ambassadors, what, what to expect. And it's just kind of a informal chat time where they can ask questions and just kind of get to know some of those students who have already walked these halls and know, know what's going to be coming. So from an academic standpoint, the launch wheel is going to be one of the offerings that our sixth grade students take as an elective offering. So every sixth grade student will be a part of the launch wheel. And again, that's a collection of four classes that they'll be rotating through. Um, the, the great thing about that is that they will continue to have access to those courses all year. So for example, every fourth A day, they would have computer science again, which means that Mr. G would be able to come back and really, he's able to talk to the teachers and figure out what do these sixth graders really need to know and tailor his lessons to make sure that he is supporting our sixth grade faculty if they have a project coming up. And so he is building those foundational skills. So that's just one example of one of our launch wheel courses. If you have any questions about academics or just middle school life in general, we are absolutely available to answer those both now and then our email addresses are here on the screen if you need to reach any of us or have any questions. But Ms. Rubio Gomez, I think we're ready to open it up for questions. Yes. OK, so. All right, well, thank you everyone. Um, I'm, I'm, I know that a lot of you as parents are probably, you felt like we just threw all of this information. So now you're dealing with all this information overload. Um, so if you, you know, here is, if you might wanna take out your phone and take a picture of this screen um, so that you can please feel free to email us with, with any of your questions. Some of the individuals on this call were not present only because we wanted to make sure to just talk focus on curriculum, but Dean Garjulo, he's our Dean of Students and he deals with our student life and we have a middle school athletic director, which is this is our first year having an athletic director here in our division. 
which is so great to be able to have a liaison between the athletic department and all the sports and coaches right here on our campus. And Jamie McIntyre, she is our middle school guidance counselor and she works very closely along with Elizabeth as academic dean and Dean Gargiulo as our dean of students. So I am, if you have any questions there, you should have a little um, bubble box up on the top. If you have any questions, you can type in some questions there. Um, if not, please feel free to reach out to one of us, to any of us, and as you're processing all of this information, you might have some questions, especially, you know, after you're having, you know, after you're sitting at the, din at the dinner table and talking about middle school and in our curriculum, um, you might have some questions that may just, oh, I didn't ask that, or they didn't mention anything about that. So please feel free to reach out anytime. So I'm going to ask a question. So Ms. Short, you may have covered this and maybe some of our parents who were joining after our meeting started where you presented the first slide. You had talked about, you know, how do we learn and understand our students? So if I have a rising sixth grader and, you know, I want to know what type of math my child is going to be in, when would I find, when will you communicate that information to me? <laughs> That's a great question. So we are going to have our current fifth graders take the rising sixth grade math test at the end of this year or towards towards the end of this year. And then as we're in communication with your child's teachers and looking at all of the data that we have, we typically are going to make those decisions at around the very around the end of the school year. They they may drift into our summer as we're looking at our schedule and what that new program looks like, but our goal is to communicate with you about your students math level and math placement at the beginning at the end of this current school year. Thank you. I don't see any other any questions on here, but again, please feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have after this call. And um, and I like to if I get a lot of questions, if I get emails, I've done this before where I've had a lot of parents email us with, you know, a ton of questions and we can hold, you know, a webinar where we're answering every single one of your questions as well. All right, well, I'm going to then say good night to everyone and um, we can't wait to see your students here on our campus.